up guys? Uh, Ringo and I are sitting here in Ventura Harbor. Uh, it's December. California has just started its second lockdown. And the first one back in March, uh, you were not even allowed to be on this beach. Surfers were being ticketed. All the beaches were closed. You know, the lockdown and quarantine was brand new. So Alan and I decided to head out to the islands to start our first quarantine cruise, as it were, and spend a week or so out of Santa Cruz. So we're gonna rewind the tapes and go check that out. Uh, we are trying to get ready to leave to go to the islands. It's the middle of quarantine. Um, it's not easy sitting here. There's like 15 knots of wind. For the Ocean Defender. I think they're finally gonna move. Cruising along about 15 to 17 knots of wind right now. I have one reef in the main uh, and a reef in our Genoa. And we are not going as fast as I would like. We're just barely making five knots. So I'm going to try and shake the reef out and see what that does to our boat speed, our boat comfort, uh, while keeping the Genoa reefed. Shaking out a reef is always easier than putting one in, so I often start with a reef when I first hoist a sail if it is blowing 15 knots in the harbor. When you're sailing a course close to the wind, here is how I approach letting out more sail. First, you don't have to change the boat's course at all. I simply let out the main sheet until the sail just starts to luff. This should depower it enough to easily handle the main halyard and the single line reef controls. And juggling those two is simply all you have to do from here. Open the clutch on your reefing line and raise the main halyard. As the halyard and mainsail come up, make sure the boom vang and main sheet do not become tight as you do not want to be fighting against those with your halyard tension. When the sail is made, you'll probably have to release the topping lift as well, then simply trim the main and apply appropriate vang. Walking back to the helm to admire your work, you'll probably have to shoot in your head sail a bit as the increased sail area is going to increase your boat speed and therefore bring the apparent wind angle further up the bow. house party, like a <laughs> FaceTime kind of thing, with uh, James Duffy, one of our best friends. He's stuck in New York, we're stuck on a sailboat, uh, but it's pretty cool even in these weird times that we can still kind of hang out like we're in each other's backyards, lots of fun. But right now we are cruising, uh, doing seven, seven and a half knots with our full main and reef Genoa, and we're trying to get to Santa Cruz before sunset. With 20 plus knots of consistent wind, it's time to put that first reef back in. So Florian has single line reefing, meaning one line is controlling both the tack and the clue and essentially pulling them down to the boom. I don't know if it is user error, old stretch sails, or maybe an improper installation, but I have quite a hard time reefing and getting a good tight and flat sail shape. My biggest issue is getting the clue down to the boom before the tack is already resting against it, not allowing me to take in any more reefing line. My good friend Captain Spencer gave me the invaluable tip of using the topping lift to actually bring the boom up to the clue, and it is the single most important piece of advice I have received. Maybe there's something weird about me or my boat setup, but I don't think the topping lift as a reefing tool is emphasized enough in all the books or classes I've gone through. Neither blame the master for a lane. 
If you have any advice on a better, smoother, or more efficient way to reef, please let me know in the comments. We're getting closer to Santa Cruz Island. Uh, wind came back up over 20 knots, so we put in, uh, or I put in, a uh, reef in the main. We still have the reef Genoa. Uh, Milana is taking a nap at the moment, but it has definitely got here because I'm still not really sure how everything looks and works but I'm sure it's quieter down here. We are cruising, we are on that lean as you can see. Uh, on the way to Santa Cruz we're just about five miles out doing seven knots with a reef in the main and a reef in the Genoa and we're yeah 22 knots of wind, seven knots of boat speed, five miles out. Uh, we're pretty good. We should have plenty of time to get anchored before sunset. Uh, the boat's behaving well. We are leaned over. But yeah, there's Anna Kappa off to the port side. Alana is taking a nap. Uh, but we are sailing the boat just fine on our own. Actually, kind of gorgeous day. With the wind still building to over 25 knots, it definitely felt like the right time for reef number two. Putting in the second reef uses exactly the same technique as the first reef. If you are sailing close hauled, just ease the main sheet a bit to luff the sail, and then it's just a bit of a juggle easing the halyard and tightening the reefing line. While maybe adding a little bit more topping lift to get that clue to meet the boom. As you approach Santa Cruz and get into that windy lane, pretty much without fail, you're gonna get 20 knots of wind, and it's a lot of fun, uh, but you definitely wanna be ready to reef. Uh, a lot of people don't like this kind of sailing. Alana is sleeping through it, but this is absolutely my element, and I actually love solo sailing like this. just got into the kind of backside of Santa Cruz, passing Hungry Man Gulch, approaching smugglers, and all of a sudden it's instantly like 20 degrees warmer, it feels like. There's a couple boats and smugglers, so we might go check out Yellow Banks, and man, what a difference, like literally 15 minutes makes. Uh, I was wearing full valleys getting spray everywhere in 26 knots of wind and now it just feels like summertime I want to jump in the water we have this point here that really uh, stops our prevailing you know west northwest winds so once you're tucked in behind here it's pretty cozy I think we're gonna go hit yellow banks because there might only be one boat in there so let's get the hook down and get some dinner going and wake Alana up from her nap. John's talent for solo sailing works out well for us because on longer trips, I take Bonine, a medicine to prevent seasickness. It is very effective, but it also knocks me out. But anything beats feeling seasick. I generally prefer the Bonine coma to feeding the fishes. Here we are, and it does not suck. <laughs> Try to? Boat steaks. <laughs> We have fun 
cooking together and it feels good to recover our strength after a long day of sailing, or in my case, being a little greener on kills, a good meal sets us up to enjoy ourselves and start the trip off on the right foot. It is a gorgeous start to the morning here on Wednesday. Uh, a few of the boats have left. Uh, smugglers, we're going to make some tea, which I think I can hear the kettle boiling right now. We're going to make some breakfast and then maybe sail into some cell phone service and find out if we have to do any work or what our other obligations are before we head uh, further up the backside of the island. Maybe try to find some waves and hang out where there is no cell service at all. Uh, let's go get that kettle. Yeah. Yeah. Morning. So we just finished checking our emails. We woke up around smugglers and then pulled up the anchor and headed into cell service just for long enough to spend a little time doing some computer work, like emailing so that we can get clear for a day or two. And now we're heading to the back side of the island and John's gonna try and surf that I'm on for And that's gonna be some pretty fun stuff. And we're thinking maybe Coaches or Alberts for where we're gonna end up tonight. 